Jesse Ventura is not your average politician, unless your average politician was also a Rolling Stones bodyguard, a Navy SEAL, and a professional wrestler. There's a reason that they call me the body, Piers. Jesse's also a Hollywood action hero, a visiting fellow at Harvard, and a noted conspiracy theorist. I speak my mind, whether anyone likes it or not. He's seen it all, he's done it all. What's left for Jesse Ventura? Could the body be planning a run for the White House? You'll be the first to know, Piers. Tonight, Jesse Ventura on JFK, conspiracy theories, and what he says the American government is doing behind closed doors. All the people that question me, I turn around and say, well, how much independent investigation have you done? Jesse Ventura for the hour. This is Piers Morgan Tonight. Jesse, welcome. Thank you. Now, you are a man... Piers, that... welcome to you. Oh, thank you. you thank were, you. I know you did replaced... Larry, Larry so many times. Yes, and you replaced a legend. Well, Larry uh, <laughs> hinted to me the reason he loved you as a guest was that you always caused trouble. Well, I, you know, if telling the truth causes trouble in the United States today, then yes, I do. Excellent. Well, that's a lot of truth-telling. But, uh, but, uh, and know, trouble. To me, truth-telling shouldn't be trouble. But if it is, so be it. What do you make of this extraordinary news cycle we're currently in, with incredible uprisings all over the Middle East, with the continuing global recession, with earthquakes and tsunamis and nuclear crises. It's been an extraordinary period. What have you made of it from your van point? Well, you probably shouldn't ask me that, considering my TV show is called Conspiracy Theories. Well, exactly. Which, of course, uh, we have a thing up in Alaska called HARP that can create all these disasters with the weather. I went and discovered that. It's located up in Alaska. Um, well, would you I, mean, I think, you know, it's... it's yeah, but just I, you can't just say that. You mean, you've got a place in Alaska that can create... Yeah, it's called HARP. What do they create there? Well, it's, it, what it is, it's, uh, it's uh, 50 uh, antennas, basically, that put out 50,000 watts, which is the maximum you can for radio and it combines and shoots it up into the ionosphere and they ricochet it off back to the ground. They can knock planes out of the air with it. They can control cloud movements and all that with it, with the weather and all this stuff. And, uh, it's, and they call it an unclassified research center. But I know that that's a lie because when I went up to go inside, they wouldn't let me in it. So clearly it is classified, so they're lying on the classification to begin with which is, a, you know, governments do that. They lie a great deal, it seems, today. Well, that's also the theme of your book. Coming back to what's going on in the world. Yeah. I think that, uh, you know, you're always going to see a rise up of, of the workers, of the people at a certain point when they've been oppressed long enough. And it seems in the Middle East, they've been dealing with these dictators and they've been dealing with uh, dictators and, and, and not fair elections or not having elections. And generally, it's the youth, which I think it is over there a great deal, too, young people. Young people are traditionally always not satisfied with the status quo. And if there's wrongs being done, young people have the courage at times to rise up against them. I mean, the way that America has dealt with each of these respective uprisings has been very different. Some would say inconsistent, to put it mildly. What's your take? Well, my take is, is that uh, we're only worried if there's a corporate interest. Uh, take Rwanda. We had no interest in that because there was nothing there corporate to gain from it. Uh, I've said publicly that uh, we're, I refer to this to us now as the fascist states of America. Because if you look at the simple definition of fascism, it's when corporations team up with organized religion to run a government. I think we're there. Really? Yeah. I don't see Barack Obama's administration as being run by organized religion, do you? No, I see it being run by corporations, though, clearly. Barack Obama ran on change. Change, people can, what was the quote? Well, what change have we seen? Nothing. He ran to close Gitmo. He ran to get us out of the wars. We're more into the wars than we've ever been, and Gitmo's still there. I got a feeling he got taken to the woodshed. I mean, you mentioned Rwanda, and that was obviously scandalous that people didn't get involved sooner than they did. Millions died as a result. Yeah. When you see what was apparently about to happen in Benghazi and Libya, where it appeared that Gaddafi was about to slaughter possibly hundreds of thousands of his own people, 
Is there not a humanitarian duty for countries like America to try and prevent that if they can? Yeah. But I think that you have to go maybe on the perspective that it has to, the first shot has to be fired first. But it was being fired. He was killing people. Oh, he was? Well, yeah. then, sure. Then obviously th there should be an intervention at some sort. But why is it always the United States? Well, it's not. It's NATO as well. You've got an alliance of countries. Why are you laughing? <laughs> what, the coalition of the willing? Is that what we have? Well, like Iraq? To, be, to be fair, <laughs> to be fair, in Libya, it was French and British planes that went in first. Okay, good. Let them go. It's about time they go. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You think America's for too long been the world's policeman? Yeah. I, if I became president, I, the first thing I would do is shut down the 248 bases that are located throughout the world. I always put it in this perspective. But that wouldn't, that wouldn't help security for America, would it? Why and why not? We, we shut down all your bases overseas? We can get anywhere. We have nuclear missiles. Oh, uh, when you look at, okay, let's reverse this for a moment, Piers. We don't like, we don't like uh, Hugo Chavez very much because he nationalized oil. He kicked corporations out of Venezuela. That's why we don't like him. Mm. And, now, he's got a lot of money. How would the United States feel if Hugo went, say, by Palm Springs and bought 100 acres of land and moved the Venezuelan military into there? So you're saying that the mere presence of American bases is inflammatory? Yeah. Why do we have bases in foreign countries? Well, the argument is to try and prevent uprisings or in these is it try, Or is it the opposite? Colonization and world dominance. I could make that argument too for it. Has, it. has it been healthy for America to be the number one superpower for so long? And is it actually, perversely, um, could it be helpful now that places like China are well, emerging? Well, I think it's very easy to see what's going on. The United States is following textbook example of the Roman Empire, getting itself involved now in three wars. Mm. When you served in Vietnam, yep. uh, you didn't, I don't think, actually have live combat there, right? You, but you were serving. Is that, is that correct? I don't talk. When I got back, I'm a Navy SEAL. Mm. When I got back from my service overseas and my first deployment, the My Lai Massacre had just happened or was just in the headlines. I was brought in by my commanding officer, my entire team, and we were ordered, we were to discuss nothing of anything we did or any ops we were on, because normally the SEALs are all part of the top secret operations. So I do not discuss anything I did in the military, other than to say I served honorably and received an honorable discharge, and I showed up, which is more than what George Bush can say. Yeah, I mean, the point I was going to make is, what lesson did you learn from being in the military about the reality of war? Um, probably the biggest lesson I learned happened to, in 2004 when I was teaching at Harvard and McNamara came through and admitted the Gulf of Tonkin incident never happened. That was the incident, the false flag operation that got us into the Vietnam War with ground troops over something that never occurred. They made it up. Well, if you start studying history closer, you find that most all wars are based on false flag operations to get the people, to convince the people that they're under attack in some way so that they will support the wars. I mean, do you think as a, as a matter of principle, as with Vietnam, as you're seeing in Libya, that America and the West generally should stay out of civil war? Yeah. Let countries fight it out if they want to? Yep. Could be a more sensible and, dare well, I say, it, cheaper foreign policy? Well, I don't know. Uh, it would certainly be cheaper. And again, what made us the uh, policemen of the world? What do you do then about somewhere like Iran? Where they have uprisings in Iran, they have a form of civil war, and the bad guys get in charge. The extremists take <laughs> hold of a country, well, and then they, then they become a genuine threat, not just to America, but particularly to Israel that's true, but other countries. Look at all the bad guys we support, simply because they're our puppets. Well, support stroke control, perhaps. Well, but we, we, well, let me put it to you this way. I was in the Philippines the day that Ferdinand Marcos declared martial law and became a dictator. Mm. He didn't do it without our permission. We gave him permission to become a dictator. Because what? He was our boy. He was our pawn. As long as they answer to our corporations, we're good with them. But isn't that the nature of the beast? Isn't that the way it has to be? <clears throat> Does it? Well, the alternative is you just let every country <clears throat> get on with it. And 
as you well, see. Well, should shouldn't quoted, countries determine their own destiny? Possibly, but as I say, you end up then with the possibility of further Iran's, which is dangerous to world peace. No one disputes that. You have a huge country run by a guy who's publicly said that he wants to annihilate Israel. These are dangerous people who then have the power to do what they say they're going to do. That can't be allowed to happen, can it? Isn't that why America and the West generally has to do dirty deals with the devil occasionally? Do they? I don't know. Well, is it the alternative is just to have open season everywhere? Well, Where America has no influence over any part of the world. That can't be healthy, surely. Well, it isn't America having the influence. It's the cor national corporations have the influence. We're the puppets to them. What would you do about oil, then? What, would I, what do you mean, what would I well, do? Well, for example, by your yardstick, if you don't go and get involved in places like Egypt, when there's an, uh, an uprising as there was, and you get extremists in charge who decide they want to punish America, and they want to get together with the Syrians and the Yemen, Yemeni and the Iranians, and they're going to stop any oil coming out of the Middle East to America, then what? Well, no, that, would, that would devastate your economy no, here. No, not necessarily. And it would devastate... I don't know. Americans, I live they? in Minnesota and we don't get any oil from there. Ours comes from Canada. Hmm. <laughs> okay. the, the point I'm making is there's oil all over the world. And but the world I, is running but, out. But, but, but our dependence, don't you think we need to shed our dependence on it? All the money we're spending in these wars to get oil, if we turned around and spent that on solar energy, and moving that forward, things of that nature forward, the amount of money we're spending to secure this oil, if we took half of it and just spent it on alternative energy, we could break this resistance and then we wouldn't be compelled to have to go over there and insure. Do you, uh, do, do you want to know why we're in Afghanistan? I'm fascinated. It came to me six months ago when a story came out that they found a vein of lithium there that they say is worth a trillion dollars. Now, what is lithium used for? Every cell phone, every computer, and soon-to-be electric cars. Yeah, so why don't they just, peers, tell me the truth? No, but Jesse, that's We're not going there to get lithium so that we can live like we live. Don't sit and try to sell me Jesse, Jesse. we're to give democracy to the world. Jesse, it sounds a bit like you've been on lithium. Come on, you can't seriously imagine we've gone to war in Afghanistan over lithium. Come on. Be serious. I am serious. My brother just served a seven-month tour of Afghanistan. I am serious. He did not risk his life for lithium. What did he risk it for? He risked it because everybody knows that Osama bin Laden was training people to commit atrocities in Afghanistan. We all know that? That's a fact. You're talking to the wrong guy. Well, you're a conspiracy I, theorist. I don't believe 9 But you don't believe in anything. No, I believe You believe in... everything has an ulterior motive. Not true. Not true at all. I've read your not book. Not true at all. Let me, let me have a short break. When I come back, yeah. I'm going to throw at you a few stories. I want to see what you think happened. Let's test these conspiracy theories. All right. Welcome. Here's how come 2,000 architects and engineers met in San Francisco demanding a new investigation. So, Jesse, you're the first guest I've had while we're still <laughs> arguing in the breaks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to your conspiracy theories. I'm unique. Let me ask you. Sure. John F. Kennedy's yep. uh, assassination. Yep. Who did that? Uh, it was done by William Harvey, who was the head of the CIA's assassination unit at that time. Uh, David Morales was directly involved in it. He likewise is the, man, the gentleman who killed Che Guevara down in Bolivia in 67, where they put him up against a firing wall and killed him and shot and killed him. Morales was part of that. Uh, I believe that because I'm, I, I saw, heard, and read a confession from E. Howard Hunt on a deathbed to his son. And when he confessed, it was not a co confession of remorse. It was a confession of pride. He wanted the world to yeah, know people say, that we helped Jesse, you out. Can, we killed John Kennedy, this communist sympathizer. But, but Jesse, aren't you being slightly naive? People can say anything on a deathbed to immortalize themselves. When I die, I might say, you know what, I well, don't want anyone to know yes. about my long-standing love affair I can be, I can with be, Elizabeth Taylor. Yeah. doesn't mean anything, does it? I can be slightly naive, except the fact that uh, you're not going to convince me he could make those shots. Why? Because I tried them, and I'm an expert marksman. He wasn't. 
and I couldn't do them. I couldn't even work the fastest I could work. The Manlachuk Arcano bolt was eight and a half seconds. And they're telling me he got three shots off in six seconds with that bolt action piece of crap weapon. I tried it. We simulated the whole thing. I couldn't do it. Did, and, did I, the, uh, and I qualified expert at age 50 when I was governor of Minnesota yet. Did Neil Armstrong land on the moon? I don't know. I what do you, what do you he think? Did. Uh, yeah, I think he did. Why would you believe that? Uh, because we have the technology to get there. We have the technology to investigate uh, an assassination. Sure we do, but we don't. Well, we have thoroughly. When a, de, when a coup d'etat takes place, there can be no trial. There can be no investigation. Been you want to know another reason why it's a farce? I'll tell you why, personally. My mother, before she died, she had a big trunk. And when she died, in the bottom of that trunk, she had every Minneapolis paper of that weekend that John Kennedy was killed. This was in Minneapolis's Monday morning paper. That means this is 63, so it had to go out early in the afternoon of Sunday to be in the Monday morning paper. And you know what was down in the bottom? Dallas police declare case closed. Come on, now, Jesse. You're it's being... right in the paper. Jesse. The Oswald, Kennedy's killed on Friday. Ruby kills Oswald on Sunday. And the Dallas PD says the case is closed. They haven't interviewed a witness. There was no confession, but the case is closed. Well, newspapers... Come on, Piers. I what type you... of investigation is that? I have never, ever heard anybody suggest the investigations were closed on the Monday. Within hours it was in the of... paper. Dallas well, police you believe declared... everything you read in the papers? I, I, never... did, I did then. I have rarely encountered a man who believes less about what he reads in the papers. And now you want me to base your whole conspiracy theory Not my whole. on the fact that you've read one Are line you in your mother's newspaper from the time? I've studied John Kennedy for 25 years, Piers. You're not, I'm not basing this on reading one line in the paper. I'm basing this on reading everything I could get my hands on. Let's move to 9-11. Your theory of 9-11 is what? My theory of 9-11 is that we certainly, at best, we knew it was going to happen. They allowed it to happen to further their agenda in the Middle East and go to these wars. So just to clarify, President George Bush knew that 9-11 was going to happen, that 3,000 people were going to get murdered. They had all the information. If you looked at the Am NSA documents, if you look, if, well, put it to you this way. Um, the August 6th memo was pretty clear. Yeah, but are you, do you genuinely believe, Jesse Ventura, that President George W. Bush knew 9-11 was going to happen? No. Why do you say it then? No. Well, why do you say it? But I believe Dick Cheney knew it. Really? Yep. You believe he knew it was going to happen? I believe they had a good, well, why did John Ashcroft quit flying commercial planes that summer and switch only to private planes? Why did that happen? You don't honestly believe these people. Do you? I don't believe you believe that. You don't honestly think Dick Cheney knew it was going to happen. You can't do. Do you really believe, it's not Piers? It's not irrational. I said Excuse it's not me. rational. Excuse me. Do you really believe that evil people can't be in charge of governments? If you do, go talk to the Germans. They know a little about that, that evil people can get in charge. The governments are run by people. Governments people can be bad. So Dick Cheney is involved, Ashcroft's involved, all these people got together and planned nine. Come on, it's madness. Oh, that's madness. But you'll fully accept that 19 Islamic radicals armed with box cutters taking orders from a guy in a cave in Afghanistan mm. could defeat our multi-billion dollar air defense yes. system, yes. which the Russians couldn't yeah. do. Jesse, that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. Really? Unfortunately, they exposed a massive flaw in Homeland Security. And what was it? The flaw was that these guys had been training and often aiming to go one way, aiming to land planes in a certain manner, but not even land them. They wanted to take off but not land. All these were clues that this was a weird set of circumstances. I'm afraid that's exactly what happened. And the trouble being a conspiracy theorist, I've got great respect for you and your book's very readable. The problem is, once you start buying into these theories, you never stop. And with the internet these days, there's a theory about everything. Yeah. I mean, do you believe Princess Diana was, was murdered? No, I don't look into that. Well, what do you think? I don't know. I isn't haven't studied the, it. Isn't the tendency of a conspiracy theory that only, it breeds I, no, other conspiracies? No, 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 no. I only go into things I study. I've studied 9-11 for three and a half years now. 
And it's my expert opinion. As a demolition expert, I was trained by the best the U.S. government has. I served three years on underwater demolition team 12. Two years I was attached to SEAL Team 1. And, and when I look at the buildings and how they fall and the way they fell, they couldn't have come down without being assisted in some manner. And then I counter... You don't believe when two then, large planes hit the World Trade Center, no, hit both towers, no. and they explode... Yeah. That that couldn't bring down two buildings? No. And that the debris because, couldn't well, bring down a third the, building? The Empire State Building was hit by a plane and it didn't collapse. It was a tiny plane that hit the Empire State Building. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. Tiny. Well, the World Trade Center buildings were tested against Boeing 707s, which are bigger than the planes that hit. Well, and and the way it was designed, if, if it was punctured, it was like a screen door. It would cause damage right where it, the hit was, but this uniform collapse... And then when you look at the powder, if it collapsed, it would collapse in big chunks. Jesse, you were... Then I was at the site two weeks after it happened with Governor Pataki, hmm. right? And they had to cease digging that day. You know why? They were finding pockets of molten liquid metal underneath. Now, if everything took place, Piers, 150 floors up, why was there molten metal Underneath, you're a, you're it, it you're requires 3,000 oh, degrees to melt metal. Jesse, you're a patriot. You're, you're a good I don't Amer know if I am. You consider yourself to be a good American? Um, I've been a mayor, I've been a governor, and I served six years and was honorably discharged from the United States Navy. Do you accept that some people, many people, will be listening to this and consider it to be quite offensive, what you're saying? What, to question government? I think it's quite offensive not to question government. No, 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 not to, it, it's more than I think it's offensive but Jesse, to sit back like a zombie and accept everything I get you're told. I get that. But when you're telling the American public, as you are right now, and indeed the wider world, this airs around the world, that Dick Cheney, Vice President of the United States... Well, I'd like knew, some answers from well, him. Yeah, but you didn't just say you want some answers. You no, said no, he no. knew and was responsible for the biggest atrocity in American history on his own ground. You believe well, that? no, no. I'll just say it happened on his watch, so they're responsible for So he didn't know? I don't know. Listen, we're going to take a break so that we can all just deep breath, calm down. Before we go, be cold. before we go, just clarify me one more time, because you said Cheney knew, and then he didn't know. Did he know or not? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. We'll I wasn't after. there. We'll I wasn't back. there. You but I certainly have questions for him that were not answered. I get it. We'll be back after the break. Thank you, Jeff. WikiLeaks release of classified information has generated a lot of attention worldwide in the past few weeks. The hysterical reaction makes one wonder if this is not an example of killing the messenger for the bad news. Exactly. That was Congressman Ron Paul talking about WikiLeaks. I'm back now with my guest Jesse Ventura. Uh, Jesse, you, you, you said exactly. So you agree with Ron Paul? Didn't you? Absolutely. In fact, if you'd have continued with that statement, uh, Representative Paul, as you know, I dedicated this book mm -hmm. to him. He's the only one there that has the courage that will stand up. Uh, he made the great statement that in a free country, when telling the truth, you can get charged for treason, we're in big trouble. Even if you've stolen the information? Uh, the stolen information, excuse me, we all pay taxes. All that information is paid for by my tax dollars. I have every right to know how my taxes are spent, how every single penny of it is spent. I have the right to know but that you they're in, using my money. You served in the Navy. Yep. Would you have been absolutely happy for every private memo involving your Navy SEAL no. group to come out? No, but Why there's not? a difference. What's the there, difference? But the difference is You're because... You're by the taxpayer. Yeah, but it could jeopardize the mission initially. Once, well, WikiLeaks couldn't? Once the mission's over... Uh, You're not jeopardizing it. You don't think it. anything published in WikiLeaks could possibly jeopardize well, wait a minute. Now, lives or wait. military w operation? W w well, let's go to this young man that's in prison right now. Right. Bradley Manning. Bradley Manning. Mm -hmm. I hope they're giving him his rights, which I don't think they are. Mm -hmm. They're holding him. He, he can't talk well, to a lawyer. On that, knows. I agree with All right. you. Bradley Manning, rights. the first thing he released was that helicopter murdering those people murdering them. Mm -hmm. So now Bradley Manning's in jail 
but the helicopter murderers are still free. They're fine. So apparently leaking this is more important than committing murder. Like I said to you. Wait, you, Piers, you answer would, that for me. No, let me answer that well, for me. You haven't answered my question. All right. My question But I've was, been answering all of them. You haven't answered one yet. I'm interviewing you, Jesse. That's the way this works. Not with me. Well, that's the way it works <laughs> with me. Well, butt heads then. Well, hey, look, I can answer perhaps for my brother, who's a British Army colonel. And when I discuss WikiLeaks with him, he says that the impact of releasing private memos private reports from the military when they're in operations is incredibly dangerous. All right, go to my book. Sure, I believe you sure, agree with it, that. It, I agree with that. I agree with that. But go to my book and see. Currently, our government every year declares 16 million things top secret. Mm -hmm. 16 million. Mm -hmm. I would say that's about everything. So what do we get to know about? But my point is, my point is, when they're abusing what's secret mm. by classifying everything they do, the public can't see. Read what, read in the back of the book what some of the great founders of this country said about secretive government. Did you believe it was in the public interest that WikiLeaks revealed, for example, that Colonel Gaddafi had four mistresses? I could care less how many women Colonel Gaddafi has. No, but do you think, is it in the public interest to, to reveal that information? I don't know, it's gossip, doesn't, doesn't bother me. But when you were governor, you hated that kind of gossip against you and your family. In fact, you detested the media that spread any kind of gossip they about They didn't your spread gossip about my family. They did it about your son, right? Oh yeah, well they trumped up charges right, on him. Right, but what I'm saying is, that kind of family gossip, private life stuff, isn't that where the line should be drawn with WikiLeaks? Why do you support everything they put out there? Given well, then, that then, you were so vocal about okay, then, any private material coming out okay, about you. Then, then why is it okay for our, 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 why is it okay for them to expose my private stuff? I'm not saying it is, but I'm saying if you felt strongly that your private life was your private life, however much you think badly well, of Colonel Gaddafi. Well, somebody had to write about it, why, didn't they? Wait, why is Gaddafi's this is a private classic, life public interest? What you're at here is a classic example of killing the messenger, not the message. If it wasn't written in the first place, there'd be no message, would there? So somebody wrote it to begin with. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't they be the ones who have put America in danger? It was, the ones who no, wrote it? No, because the whole point of being a diplomat is that when you report to your governments well, around the world, and here, wait, wait, let me then finish. we're in sad let shape when diplomats have to sit and lie, when they have to write things mm. that people aren't allowed to read, and if they do read, they take offense to. Well, I would say that's which part the, of the big problems which, of the world which today. Which were the lies in WikiLeaks? I don't know. But you just said they were lying. I didn't say they were lying. You said, you said it's a sad I, day when diplomats lie. Where were they lying? I'm saying when they're saying bad things. Mm about other people. But we're, they wrote it. But they weren't All it was was exposed. And my point was, there may, there may not be may So not be in lies, other words, Jesse. Piers, you figure, let government keep everything secret. No, it's all I okay. No. It's all, yeah, it's no, all okay. No, because don't. somebody in government has deemed this I top don't. secret. I don't. But so therefore, hands off. I don't. Because we don't dare know a thing our I don't government put words does. in my mouth. See, boy, this that's also, what you're doing to me. No, I started the debate by asking you when you were a Navy SEAL. Yep. Did you believe that a number of private reports should have stayed private? And you said yes. So you Only believe... Only till after the op's over. When the op's over, you can go public with all that you want. Really? You think it's good for the world to know exactly how Navy SEALs conduct their covert operations? Do you around the world? How we... They already know. Would you agree if the CIA discovered tomorrow that they knew where Osama bin Laden was, that he should be assassinated? No. What about Gaddafi? No. You don't care? No, I think they should be arrested and tried mm -hmm. in a court of law. Since when does we, do, uh, what are we, in the Wild West? We just go out and if people we don't like, we kill them? Isn't that what you did? Everyone, everyone's willing to be killed? Jesse, with respect, yeah. isn't that exactly what Navy SEALs do all the no, time? No, we're at war. War is different. Well, we're at war with Osama bin Laden. We are. Aren't we? We're taking a quick break. We okay. will continue this when we come back. All right. My special guest, Jesse Ventura, who's on the 
put it mildly, feisty form this evening. Well, I've been gone to Mexico four months and hadn't had no one to talk to, Piers. Well, I'm glad, so it, was, you're the guy. glad it was me, Jesse. Now, <laughs> let me put you in a hypothetical position, Jesse. Yep. You are President of the United States. Yep. And by the way, this, this wasn't at one stage a fanciful notion. You were doing very, very well as Governor of, of Minnesota. Oh, there's already a movement out there, grassroots right now, that wants me for president. Okay, so let's, <laughs> let's take it one step forward, sure. maybe three steps forward. You're president of the United States, yep. and you've had an attack like 9-11 yep. happen on your watch. Yep. And the whole country, in fact the world, is desperate for this not to happen again. Yep. And you capture three, four people yep. who you absolutely believe, from all intelligence, not just yours, but every other country yep. involved, Yep. Are senior Al Qaeda terrorists kind of like are, curveball? Who wait? Who are actively kind of like curveball? Wait, wait. Who are actively plotting to commit similar atrocities? All right. But they don't want to talk. Yep. How do you get out of them? You just have to do what you can to attempt to get it out of them. But torture is not the answer. Because torture. Why do you think we don't allow it in a court of law? Because if you're being tortured, you're going to say anything to stop the torture. It has no credibility to it. And I'll counter you with this. We had a terrorist attack in Oklahoma City. Many people thought there were more involved than Timothy McVeigh and Nichols, the two guys. Why didn't we waterboard them? Why weren't they waterboarded? So we could find out what they knew, could find out whether more attacks were looming. Was there more conspirators in this? How come? Do so you think it's Pierce? inconsistent? I think it's very inconsistent. I think the only people that get waterboarded are people of the Muslim faith because nobody else is getting waterboarded why didn't we waterboard mcveigh and nichols we had them in fact we put one of them to death and the others in prison for life why weren't they waterboarded to find out what they knew what do you think of guantanamo you Bay? haven't asked him my question Piers. i'm not answering any of the questions well, the You're point the is, being but it's a good question isn't it why why were these it's guys good, waterboarded and these guys not yeah. waterboarded yeah, but Remember the dynamic of the interview, Jesse. I'm interviewing you. All right. It's your views I'm yeah, trying to remember, get. Remember, I've been in your seat, so it's hard. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of Guantanamo Bay? I think it's atrocious. I think it's awful. I, I've, I'm so disappointed that Barack Obama didn't close it. In a court of law, every one of these guys is going to walk. Because anything gotten by torture is inadmissible. We are a supposed civilized nation who should not stoop to that regardless of whatever the results would be. Because if you stoop to that level, you can never get back what you, could, what you have. Jesse, a remarkable thing has just happened. I agree with you. Let's move on. Do you believe that President Obama is a puppet of the CIA, as you've suggested? A puppet of the CIA? I didn't suggest that. Let me play a clip to you. What you're saying is Barack Obama was a CIA agent? He was what they call a CIA asset. He was enrolled in the early 1980s by Zvenu Brzezinski. Mr. Brzezinski is the head of the Trilateral Commission, and Mr. Obama had been pre-identified as one of their candidates to be U.S. president. Now, did you look at my face there? That was a face of stunned. So when you're asking me, do I believe that? I, oh, this is this guy telling me this. Let me show you my face. What That's the what hell I did. are you talking about, you idiot? Is what I would have said to that guy. No, because you have a That's TV. That's my face. No, because you have a TV show to do. You can't be calling guests idiots. You can. Well, you shouldn't. But anyway. Why not? Well, because that's, well, that's your idiots. style's different than mine. But that was him saying that. I wasn't saying that. You allowed this, this crackpot airtime on your show to spout complete nonsense. Crackpot? It's an entertainment show. Entertainment? Yes. Suggested Conspiracy the president... theory is an entertainment show. Okay, it's, it's also we just very use, dangerous. We just use reality. It's dangerous. But you let this guy spout off that President Obama is a member of the CIA? Can you say he's not? Yes, he's not. Never was. He's not. How do you know that? Just call it a gut feeling, Jesse. When Let's George take another Bush short was, break. When Jesse. George Bush was made vice president. I need to catch my breath, never mind yours. Let's take a short break. When we come back, I want to talk about your other great conspiracy theory, which is that the TSA want to do you in.
Now, Jesse. Yep. We've had a lot of <laughs> lively discussion here. Let's turn to all of your pet hates. And we're still smiling at we're each still other. Smiling. See, we of can course. get along and have lively discussions. Absolutely right. Tell me about your battle with the TSA. Well, it's it's still in court, so or it's pending court because uh, it's with Homeland Security also and Janet Napolitano, the head. I've brought a federal lawsuit against them uh, on the Fourth Amendment, the Bill of Rights, and I do this as an individual. What do you object to? I object to the fact that I have metal in my body, and therefore I could go through the metal detector naked, and it's going to set it off. So you have a titanium hip implant. Yeah, which sets off all of the, the metal detector, which then means I'm subjected to these further searches now, and the man from San Diego is completely correct that if they give you the body search, I had it done once to me, mm -hmm. it, it is a sexual assault on the street. You would be charged with a crime on the street. And my belief, I'm suing, it's all, you can get it on the internet, my whole complaint. Uh, it's only for me. I, I asked for no money. All I'd ask for them is to stop. Do not search me anymore. Because I believe that the Fourth Amendment, the key word is reasonable. So should nobody be searched? No, I'm saying only me. Who would you search? No, you're good me off on a tail. You ask me about my court case, that's what I'm discussing. But why just you? you? Because of who I am. It is not reasonable to believe Jesse Ventura, former governor, former mayor, six-year Navy veteran, poses any threat to anyone. You believe in profiling, basically? Yeah. Who, rather... who would you search? Describe the person to me. Well, first, I don't know. You're, you're in charge. Off. No, 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 no. You can't, you can't cop out. You can't say, I'm I want to be excluded. Out. I'm just saying I'm suing on my behalf. No one else Would is. you only profile Muslims at airports? I'm, I don't know. I, I, I've never done that. Well, it's unlike you to have no opinion. Well, on this one, I don't have one. Why? Because you're worried about being inflammatory? No. Don't be a coward. Because I'm not a... you calling me a coward? <laughs> Young man. I've done things that would make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. By what? You cannot insult me into thinking you're going to get something out of me by calling me a coward. Well, suggesting My I'm... track record, nobody goes through buds and is a coward. I was pointing out that your failure to answer that question may well, be a cowardly response because I think I know what you think the profiling should be. You just don't want to say it in public. Am I, I have right? no problem saying in public. Have they caught anyone? Clarify. Have they caught anyone? For? With, this pro with what they're doing at the airports. If they caught someone, it'd be in the headlines, wouldn't it? Oh, maybe so not. they're doing all this and they haven't caught a soul. But there also, there have been, touch wood, there have been no further uses of planes as weapons. Right. So well, they're not going to do the same thing again. How stupid would that be? Most terrorists any, do the same thing any, again and again. Any do you accept, though, that in your fury against the TSA... I have no fury against no, them. No, I just want them to stop I haven't made because my point. they're violating my Fourth Amendment. I haven't made my point. Okay. In your complaint about them, actually, you've identified why they have such a hard job, haven't you? Because you yourself have no idea who they should be profiling. You just know they should be profiling. No, I just don't want to answer the question. Because so, I have a court case pending, and I don't like to talk about things that could affect the court case. Okay. You're reserving a right to silence. Because An unusual position case. for Jesse Ventura. Well, when, you, when you're in federal court waiting for a judge to rule, I probably spoke too much today on it that I shouldn't have. Excellent. You right, know? we're going to take one more break. And when we come back, I want you to say a little bit more than you should again. My special guest, Jesse Ventura, new book, 63 Documents the Government Doesn't Want You to Read. I'd imagine this program could become document number 64. No, they do you know, don't want do you know why we picked 63? <laughs> Go on. Could have probably got 263. I picked 63 because that was the year they killed President Kennedy. Right. And the I CIA. thought the significance would be good, 63. Will you ever be running for president? Would I? Hmm. You know, you never say never. I mean, I've learned that in my 59 years now that you, that you never shut a door. Do I have an intention of running? No, not at this time, unless they want to move the White House to the Baja. You know, right now I like my life down there. Also, uh, 
I think that if I ran for president, it would be very dangerous for me and my family. Why? Well, because I don't believe the power structure would allow a rogue like me to get in there. Because one of the things that disturbs me the most was when President Obama and all these guys, whenever they come into office, the first thing they tell the public is, it's time to move on. We can't look behind us anymore, no matter what's been done. We're going to move on. Well, that's the government's way of covering their asses. So that anyone that's in office can do anything they want, and the people that come after them, they're all part of the same system, will never look back or do anything to anyone that... What are the other barriers to you being president, do you think? Uh, the fact that I, I, well, I hate the fundraising because to me it's panhandling or bribery. Mm -hmm. If you panhandle, you say, give me money so I can do this job, that's panhandling. If you give back a favor, then it's bribery. And we have an entire system built upon panhandling and bribery. And what about religion? But, but I, well, I have a problem there too because I've now admitted I'm an atheist. And in this country of the United States, which is fascist now, in my opinion, is organized religion teaming up with corporations to control the government. In the United States, there's some prevailing feeling out there that because you don't believe in the Tooth Fairy, Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, or God, uh, these, this being you can never see or it exists only in your mind, uh, that somehow you don't have values. Jesse Ventura doesn't actually exist, of course. It's a fictitious character that you created. Mm -hmm. Are you going to stay with Jesse Ventura? No, I'll kill him. Really? Mm -hmm. When? I don't know yet. Soon? But the day's coming. How you I gonna, can't answer. How are you going to kill him? Uh, I will disappear. So yeah. this, this might be the last interview Jesse Ventura gives? No, it, no, because I'm on the book tour. I'll be giving interviews for another 12 days. <laughs> <laughs> So the death of Jesse comes in a year? Possibly. And that's it? Gone? Gone. All over? All over. Well, I'm glad to have caught you before it was too late, Jesse. Well, and then again, I don't want your peers calling me a liar because I could be here 15 years from now and be the president. You know what? Stranger things have happened. <laughs> that's right. Jesse Ventura? My friend, thank you. Thank it's you been for a your pleasure. Time. And like I said, you're very good at hitting buttons. Thank I you, see Jesse. why they hired you. I'll take that as a compliment.